Guys, big shout out to Brendan O'Connell for mentioning Alpine.js in a recent comment in the Bricks uh, Facebook community. Um, I had heard of Alpine.js some time ago, but I didn't give it a second thought because I'm not a full-time JavaScript uh, developer. I'm not a full-time developer, in fact. Um, so I don't didn't really want to go down a rabbit hole of learning something new when there's already so many reactor frameworks like you know, AngularJS, um, React, Vue, and a few others. So my initial thought was it's a rabbit hole that I'd waste time in. Um, for those of you who have been using Alpine for some time, it's now the 12th of May 2024. Um, give me a virtual slap because uh, I'm hearing you and this is brilliant and I should have been looking at this because it's absolutely brilliant and I definitely will be using this going forward. What I like about it is that regardless of what build you're using, it is as simple as in queuing a script and then start using the attributes for your dynamic and um, reactive uh, components. So the example they give is a dummy component because it's actually dummy URL because it's got these X's in it. So you've got to find out what the current uh, build is uh, for that. And you can easily do that just by going to this JS Alpine deliver. Sorry, this one JS. Just find that. Easily find that by going there and just search for, where's my search? There, if I search for Alpine. Here's my Alpine JS. So if I click on that, there's my link. That's the link that I need, which has got the current one, which is 3.13.10. So what we could do is we could grab that. Actually, I think there's a copy button there. We'll copy the URL. And actually, we'll copy the whole lot. Copy the whole HTML. We can really simply do this by going into a Bricks Builder, adding a code block, and pasting that in there and then just enabling the code execution. We need to sign the code, obviously, and render with that wrapper. That will enqueue our Alpine ready to go. Right, but that's a bad idea because you don't want to have code blocks enqueuing common scripts that you're going to use probably in multiple places. So a better way to do this would either be enqueue that in your uh, child theme using uh, the uh, WordPress uh, enqueuing functions or uh, in my case, I've just uh, gone into WP Codebox, created a uh, script for internal scripts, external scripts, added it to there, set it to defer, and enabled it. That's all I've done in WP Codebox, and that makes it available to all of my bricks. Okay, so that's the first step, is getting that. First line there is to get Alpine enqueued, and that's a very quick run through, but that's how simple it is. But once it's done, all we have to do is worry about these. And in Bricks, we can set attributes really, really easily. So if we look at what this is doing, what this is actually saying is our data for our Alpine is whatever's inside there. OK, there's other ways to set this, but just for the simple example, it's creating an object with one property that has the value I love Alpine. And then what we're doing with this attribute is we're saying we want the text for this HTML to be bound to that message property. So when this message here changes, the text displayed by that H1 automatically changes. If we said X HTML, then, and we have HTML in our properties here, it will render the HTML for that H1 tag. So it's a really simple way of doing things. So how would you do this in Bricks? Let's have a look at the first example that I've got here, which is this heading. So all I've done is I put a heading on there and made it an H1. And in my attributes, I've added my X data attribute. I'll just zoom in a little bit on that so you can see that a bit better. X data attribute and set it to that message, which I've copied directly from here. So to set that attribute, that's the attribute name, that's the attribute value. We need to set our X text to be the message property now. So in here, we just create an X text attribute and set that to message. And that is what makes that work there. OK, so even if inside this, it says that I'm heading, which is now replaced with I love Alpine. 
automatically by Alpine, right? I then have an example down below where if I click load random post, it goes to my back end, it gets a object, and then it just updates these. Have a look at that. So let's have a look at what we did. So our, in fact, I'm just going to click that again. So I've called a random post rest endpoint, and that's returned this object, which is our title, URL, and excerpt. And these fields here automatically update with whatever was retrieved from that object. So that last one here had a bit longer expert, excerpt, automatically updates, right? I'm not going to go into all the code here um, because that's, that could be a long tutorial. I'm just showing you the advantage of using this. But if we look at the next container, which is my um, example there, my dynamic data example. If I look at my button, it's just a standard uh, button uh, that I've told is a button. And that's it as far as the button goes. And then in my attributes, all I've done is added a click listener. So in Alpine, you can do uh, X dash on. So I could change that to X dash on colon click, which makes it a click listener. Or I can just put an at symbol. It does exactly the same thing. It's a shortcut. So basically saying when this is clicked, call fetch post. Okay, so it's going to call a function called fetch post. Now, it's really hard to read in this small letter. So I've actually got the same code open up in a uh, VS code here. It's exactly the same as what's in Bricks. And basically, when I call fetch post, it's going to call this function, which calls my rest endpoint, gets the data, and it sets my post title, post URL, post excerpt to whatever the data returned. Here's my error handling there. So that's the important part. So we set a default of the post title, post URL, post excerpt. And then basically when the data is returned, we just update those. That is all we need to do for the DOM to update. We don't need to find the uh, H1 and find the div and find the button and the URL. And we don't need to do any of that. It does it automatically for us. Okay. So the looking at the structure here, how do I make that work? So on the container above that uh, above that structure there I've got an attribute it says X data and my X data is random post if we look at that this is our this is a different way of initializing the data which I won't go into in this so we're setting Alpine data random post so that's our context in effect in effect is random post so we're saying that at this point in the DOM we want our data to be based on random post on whatever's in there. So our post title, post URL, post excerpt are going to be properties underneath that. So when we go down to our heading, have a look at our attributes. X text is based on post title. Go to excerpt. X text is based on post excerpt. So you get the picture. All I'm doing is updating these variables and those automatically update. Let's have a look at the DOM for that. Okay. So if we look at the DOM, we go to this container here and we've got X data as our random post. So that's saying from that point, this here is our data for that. Okay. So on the button, we're saying when it's clicked, call the fetch post function. So when, because we've got random posts as our data attribute, there is a function called fetch post, which this click hand is going to call. Okay. Fetch post is going to update the post total post you're on post excerpt when it gets it from the back end. So we go down to the H3 and all we're doing is saying X text is our post title. This class here with bricks text, X text is our post excerpt. Okay, the URL, uh, X bind, which is another property, we're binding the href to our post URL. Uh, and we could put a message in here if we wanted to as well. That's all we do. And we use that user attributes in bricks. Actually, I didn't show you that last one. Let me quickly look at that. So on the last, on the read more there, We've used the XBind attribute 
So we want to bind the href to our post URL. Okay, that's Alpine working in Bricks. So you can imagine you could use this for dynamic uh, pages when they're rendered. This could be like, for example, you have a task list or a to-do list and you want to update the to-do list and then automatically updates the back end, um, loads the data and then updates your view automatically. Um, I can see a lot of uses for this. Um, so I'm going to end this here because this is really an introduction to how you can use Alpine with a builder like Brex, and not really the detail of the you know the the, the rest endpoint and the uh, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it's worth looking at. I love the fact now we have a really easy option with Brex using the Brex uh, dynamic data for our server side rendering. And using Alpine, we have a very, very simple solution for dynamic data on a rendered page. Uh, and I'm, I'm loving this idea. So, guys, I missed the boat, but I'm certainly going to pick it up from here. So, uh, thanks for listening. And if there's any comments, or any experts out there on Alpine that are telling me that I've got it wrong, uh, or there's a better way to do this, then I'd love to hear from you. If you're new to it, head over to Alpine js.dev uh, there's a bunch of info here um, talks about all the attributes how they work uh, and then you've got the get started page here which is a lot of information on getting started um, but in its simplicity it is an absolute godsend of a time saver and it will be my goat okay thanks for listening guys